will crown each passing day till heaven shines ahead and beckons us away each for the other and both for the Lord oh darling sweet 
David, as you come before these witnesses, are you signifying that you are taking the initiative in this marriage covenant? And that you will be the example of our Lord Jesus Christ and assume the greater responsibility in carrying out his terms. Yes, sir, I do. down the aisle with your daughter, are you and your wife affirming that you are giving your full blessing to the marriage of your daughter to this man? We are. Are you also hereby transferring your God-given responsibility for the care and protection of your daughter to this man? Yes, we are. We want to welcome each one of you here today as witnesses and celebrate the lives being joined together with a goal of bringing great glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Our Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity to witness this occasion. Lord, the joining of two lives, David and Priscilla. Lord, before the foundation of this world, you had already ordained this day. Lord, you brought these two lives together. And I pray, God, your blessing upon them. I pray, God, your protection and good health to them. Lord, in the days to come as they serve you and they honor you in all that they do. Thank you for this great cloud of witnesses that are here today. Lord, represented here as friends and family. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, your blessing to be upon this service. And, Lord, that you will truly receive all glory and honor. We thank you. We praise you. In Christ's name, amen. sense of uh, being in a, the vestibule of heaven, getting ready for the great wedding feast, returning with all of the uh, loved ones here, and especially David and Priscilla. This is really a fulfillment of a, a lifelong dream of training up young 
men to be mighty in spirit, and young women virtuous and godly to come together in marriage to form a mighty union for God. You've heard me talk about uh, doing great things. That's all changed. I heard something uh, a week ago that gives me a whole new perspective in life. Why spend your life doing great things when God has called us to do impossible things? The people of the world can do great things, but only God can do impossible things. And God has called all of us to do impossible things. With God, there's nothing impossible. But that's what this marriage is all about. A godly marriage today is impossible with men. Because so many go at it with the idea of trying to love each other. And that doesn't work. Because our human love is imperfect. And someday you may just possibly wake up and not want to love your mate. But if you have an outlook, that won't be a problem. Because God does not want us to love each other. He wants us to be a channel of his love to that person. So it doesn't depend upon our human love, which is based upon expectations. We expect from them. That's why we love them. If they stop giving, we stop loving. That's human love. But if you would both purpose to simply be channels of God's love to each other. So when you wake up and you don't feel like loving, you say, well, God, I don't love today, but you do. So how do you want to love my partner through me? I'll be the channel, but you be the lover. Now, in order for that to work, though, you must give each of you all your expectations to God. Now, you'll have expectations of you as the other, but expectations destroy relationships. Every expectation you have is like the bar of a prison. You put them in the prison of your expectations, and you put yourself in the prison of bitterness. Because people will always violate our expectations. And that's why we're told in Psalm 62.5, my soul, wait thou only upon God, from him cometh my expectations. So when, uh, uh, the more we expect, the less we can love. But the less we expect, the more we can love. So when David does something nice to you, rather than saying, it's about time, <laughs> or that's part of your job, you can be delighted. I wasn't expecting a thing. And when Priscilla does something nice for you, you don't have to say that's your job. By the way, uh, an impossible marriage is when you understand your role, your roles. Priscilla, God said you to be a helpmeet. But what does that mean? That's not household duties. God never even talked about marriage until Adam had three things. A daily walk with God, a wisdom on the resources they had in the garden, and a life message based upon God's command. So he said, man needs to help me to help with these three things. For him to maintain that daily walk with God pick him out the house periodically to go meet with God. He'll come back a better husband and father, Lord willing. Um, to give him wisdom in the resources, don't ever let him borrow any money. And number three, 
the commands of Christ being lived out in his life, so it's a growing life message. Now, the more successful you are as a help meet, and the more successful he is as a mighty man of valor, a strong man of his house. No one can enter a strong man's house unless he first binds a strong man in some addiction, some besetting sin. Then he will come in and plunder the treasures of that man. But as you're a mighty man of valor, and she's a godly wife and mother, then you're going to be doing impossible things for God, especially as you come to be in one accord. And all it takes is two, being in a quorum, being in one accord, and the power of God's Spirit will come upon you, and you'll do mighty things for God. Now, God loves examples. He said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Not like him in all the world. A man, a perfect and upright man who fears me and hates evil. That's God's um, agenda for a man. The more you love, the more you fear God, the more you hate evil. The less you fear God, the more you love evil. And fearing God is being aware that he's watching every thought, word, and action. And we reward or discipline accordingly. When you have a impossible marriage. Only God can create life in the womb. Only God can raise them up to be mighty in spirit. As you do mighty things for God, great things, impossible things for God, as we've seen families here do, then you will have enemies. Um, God will raise them up because that's part of his program. God uses our enemies to position us to accomplish impossible things. If Joseph had not had brothers who hated him, he would never have been in a position to be the ruler of Egypt. If um, David had not had Saul trying to destroy him, he never would have written the Psalms he did in refuge. If Jesus had not had the Pharisees to hate him, we would not have salvation today. And that's why we're told, rejoice when all men speak evil of you and falsely and all kinds of evil. Rejoice, be exceeding glad. Great is your reward in heaven because you will be doing impossible things for God that Satan is not like, but God is delighted with. So I want to thank you for the privilege of investing in your lives. Now I know what a father feels like. Married off a son and a daughter. I'm so delighted that you'll be together and for serving in this ministry. And just a little sidelight here. Uh, I was unexpectedly appointed a few weeks ago the chairman of the board and the president of the World Trade Center of Illinois in Chicago. In May, we're having world leaders from all over the world, presidents come to our hotel in Oakbrook. Security will be dealing with the leaders of the world. I never imagined this as be part of the ministry. God is doing exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think, and that's why we want you to plan on doing impossible things for God. I like a little um, definition of love in a little different version. It is slow to lose patience, looks for ways to be constructive, not possessive, is neither anxious to impress nor does it cherish inflated ideas of its own importance. Love has good manners. It does not pursue selfish advantage. It is not touchy. It does not keep account of evil 
or gloat over the wickedness of other people. On the contrary, it is glad with all good men when truth prevails. Love knows no limit to his endurance, no end of his trust, no failing of his hope. It can outlast anything. It is, in fact, the one thing that still stands when all else has fallen. God bless you with genuine, impossible love. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you all for being here. This pro, uh, on the last page of your program is something, uh, a song that's meant a lot to me. It's the love of God. And this is really, as much as this is about Priscilla and I, this is about the love that God has for each one of us. That he would send his only son to die for our sins. And so as you turn to the last page in your program, you can join us as we sing the love of God and how great it really is. You guys have shown a lot of love to us. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of our lives. You've really blessed us both and made us who we are today. Let's go ahead and stand now and sing the love of God. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever Priscilla Lynn Keller. Take you, Priscilla Lynn Keller. To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawfully wedded wife. 
I vow in covenant before our holy God and these witnesses. I vow in holy covenant before God and these witnesses. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. To give myself for you as Christ gave himself for the church. To give myself for you as God gave himself for the church. To accept you as you are. To accept you as you are. To be open and honest with you. To be open and honest with you. To honor and value you. To honor and value you. To keep and defend you. To keep and defend you. To be the spiritual leader of our home. To be the spiritual leader of our home. To wash you in the truths of God's word. To wash you in the truths of God's word. To receive each child as a blessing from him. To receive each child as a blessing from him. And raise them in the fear and honor of Christ. And raise them in the fear and honor of Christ. With all my heart. With all my heart. I welcome and receive you into my life. I welcome and receive you into my life. To hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Forsaking all others and cleaving only to you. Forsaking all others and cleaving only to you. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. As Christ makes us one. As Christ makes us one. I desire to serve the Lord together. I desire to serve the Lord together. And spend the rest of my life with you. And spend the rest of my life with you. Priscilla, my heart safely trusts in you. Priscilla, my heart safely trusts in you. I love you. Priscilla, will you repeat after me, please? <coughs> with deepest joy, I, Priscilla Lynn Keller, with deepest joy, I, Priscilla Lynn Keller, take you, David William Waller, take you, David William Waller, to be my lawful wedded husband, to be my lawful wedded husband. I vow in covenant before our holy God and these witnesses. I vow in covenant before our holy God and these witnesses. To love and to cherish you. To love and to cherish you. To accept you as you are. To accept you as you are. To be open and honest with you. To be open and honest with you. And to honor and respect you. And to honor and respect you. To follow you as the spiritual leader as you follow God. To follow you as a spiritual leader as you follow God. To submit myself to you as the head of our home. To submit myself to you as the head of our home. As Christ is the head of the church. As Christ is the head of the church. To receive each child as a blessing from him. To receive each child as a blessing from him. And raise them to fear and honor Christ. And to raise them to fear and honor Christ. David, with all my heart, I welcome and receive you into my life. David, with all of my heart, I welcome and receive you into my life. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. <clears throat> to love and to cherish. And forsaking all others. And forsaking all others. Cleaving only to you till death do us part. And cleaving only to you till death do us part. As Christ makes us one. As Christ makes us one. I desire to be by your side as your faithful and loving wife. I desire to be by your side as a faithful and loving wife. For whither thou goest, I will go. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. 
Thy people shall be my people. And together we will serve. And together we will serve. Want to exchange rings at this time? I love you. Remembering that these wedding bands represent eternity and that they have no beginning and no ending is a reminder of God's endless love for you and I. He desires to give to you and, and through you. And may this ring be a constant reminder to faithfully fulfill the vows of your covenant made this day before God and these witnesses. Priscilla, do you take this ring as a token of David's love for you and as a reminder of your covenant made this day? I do. David? Do you take this ring as a token of Priscilla's love for you and as a reminder of your covenant made this day? I do.
Two lives now join as one. A journey has begun. Two lives by God united to run this race. you would join David and Priscilla as we pray and bless the desire to serve the Lord in raising a godly family. Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and we pray that you would advance your kingdom in the hearts of the people of this world through David and Priscilla's lives and through their families' lives. We pray that you would bless David and Priscilla with children who are mighty in spirit, and that their children would be mighty upon this earth, and that true wealth and true riches would be in their house and their inheritance in heaven. We pray that you, your will will be done on this earth, and that your name will be glorified in and through their lives, and that you would give them true wisdom. Fill them with your power and your Holy Spirit. Keep them in the palm of your hand and help them to stand in the evil day. Give them your daily bread, your word, for your guidance, and to show them your sustaining love. And forgive them for their sins and cleanse them from all unrighteousness and make them whole. Help them to forgive each other and others and make your way straight in front of them that they will be sure to go in your way. Deliver them from all evil and help them not to act presumptuously but to follow you in all their ways to the end that their glory may sing your praise. Hallelujah. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Father of a truth, the earth is full of your goodness, of which we are participating today. Father, we ask you, through the blood of Jesus, that you would fill David and Priscilla with your spirit, giving them a joy unspeakable and full of glory, having the same mind, being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one spirit. Father, we pray your spirit would so influence their lives as it's reflected in their lives, it would bring glory and honor to you. Father, your ways are so good and pure and holy and just. And as we sense it today, it's fun, joy unspeakable. We praise your name. We ask your blessing of your presence, our great exceeding reward upon their lives in every decision they make. Thank you for being a strong, mighty tower that we can run to and be safe. Be thou their habitation, Lord. May they have the privilege of abiding in you moment by moment, seeking first your kingdom and your righteousness, helping each other, serving each other, being an example of Christ in the church in this world of darkness. We ask it in Christ's name. Heavenly Father, we're grateful that marriage is honorable. This is an honorable marriage. Thank you for David and Priscilla, and I pray for them. And I pray that this marriage would be a picture of Christ and his relationship with us, the church. And I pray that they would love each other. And that, that David, David would be mighty in spirit. And that he would fear God, delight greatly in his commandments, walk uprightly. Priscilla would have a quiet spirit and that she would love God with all her heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I pray, dear God, for, for them that they would be fruitful and multiply and that they would raise up many godly generations and that their children would be sharp arrows and not only that, that their sons would be as plants grown up in their youth, and that their daughters would be cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace, and that they would speak with the enemies in the gate. And may God be merciful and bless them. May his countenance be upon him. May his face shine upon them, that your way may be known upon the earth. Protect them, guide them, direct them, Lead them, strengthen them, empower them by the power of thy mighty Holy Spirit. Use them to the glory of God to reach a life with a life. We pray this all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for his sake. Amen. Father, it's such a joy to be here to witness this miracle of you bringing two precious young people together. And Father, we thank you, Father, for both David and Priscilla have such a ministry mindset. They, they both have just been dedicated to following you with their whole heart and life. And for you to bring them together, Father, you're going to do, you're going to do so much together as a couple to be an example to others. And Father, I pray that, that they would just continue to be the spiritual leader that you want him to be. And, and Father, that Priscilla... Uh, she has such a heart to win souls, Father. I pray you just would use them as a couple together to win many people to you, to proclaim your principles throughout the world, to raise up uh, many children, Father, that, that will be an army for you. Thank you for what you're going to do through their lives, Lord, and just guide their way and protect them. Thank you in Jesus' name. We all pray together one accord dear Heavenly Father we love you would you bless David and Priscilla would you keep them from evil would you help them never to go to bed bitter at one another would you help them 
to pour their lives into the ones you want them to pour their lives into. To keep them from evil. Guide them. Which families and individuals to invest their time and talents into. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. David, now is the time you have been so patiently waiting for. But let me first explain to everybody here why this is so special to David and Priscilla. They have chosen the higher standard to wait till now for their first kiss. David, you may now kiss your bride. introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. David Waller. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. what we have just witnessed here is a picture of what Christ desires to do for each of us. Similarities here, David and Priscilla have joined together as one. They confessed with their mouth what they believed in their heart. You know, that's the same way in salvation. Christ came to this earth to die on an old rugged cross. He rose again the third day. He redeemed us by his wonderful grace. You know, he, when he went to the cross, he already said, I do. He's simply waiting for our response. We must confess with our mouth, as Romans 10, 9 said, Confess with our mouth that Christ hath raised him from the dead. Believe in our heart. And the Bible said, and thou shalt be saved. You know, it's very simple. Salvation is not complicated. Christ loves each and every one of us here today. The fact that he gave his life, that we might have life. All we need to do is acknowledge that we're sinners. That's why Christ came. 
and believe that he died for our sins and repent from those sins. That repent means to turn around, turn from darkness to light, turn from the old way to the new way, the old life to the new life. I wonder, have you accepted the free pardon and the gift that God has given? Some may be here today, no doubt in a crowd this size, that have never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Well, guess what? You can today. You can leave here with joy and peace in your heart, with the assurance to know that one day you'll spend eternity with Him in heaven. With your eyes closed, your heads bowed, say, I don't know, I didn't know they did these things at weddings. We're in church, right? We're before a holy God. What a wasted opportunity if we do not give you the privilege of accepting Christ. You say, I've never done that. I want to lead you in a prayer. If you believe it with all of your heart, confess it with your mouth. The Bible says, thou shalt be saved. Dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And I know that you died and forgave me of all my sins. Lord, I confess those sins to you. And ask you that you would cleanse me and make me a new creation. Lord, I give my life to you. And Lord, I want to thank you right now for salvation. Thank you for eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. While your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Would there be one here today that have said that prayer? Just raise your hand. We're, no, we're not going to point you out. Nobody's looking around. One person. Is there anybody that has done that today? If you have any questions, would like to talk to somebody, we would love to take the time to show you and talk to you about your eternal destiny. Amen.
instructions and a lovely reception has been prepared for you. And David and Priscilla would love to have everybody come by and, and share in that. And just at the moment, we'll be dismissed for that. We just say you go up these front doors here, go through the archway, down the sidewalk, into the family life. Or you go through this side door here, through the glass door, and then to your right, the family life. Uh, there is a special announcement that was given me here. The bride and groom have made a special request that portraits be taken by each family, couple, or group of friends who are attending this guest today. And so when you arrive at the reception hall, please proceed to the uh, studio area as soon as possible. They also have a card of portraits that uh, they would like for people to sign, and if you can help them out with that, they would really appreciate that. Let me say thank you on behalf of David, Priscilla, and their families. What a, what a great representation of people that have come today to honor and this special occasion. We appreciate so much of being here. In town tomorrow, we'd like to invite you to our services. And uh, we have Sunday school at uh, 9.45 and then 11 o'clock our morning worship. And we would just be uh, thrilled to have any of these guests here today to stay with us and uh, I know it will be a blessing to you. All right, let's stand together. And when you go over there, you can find yourself a seat. Uh, now, the immediate family, the blood family, relatives, uh, need to stay by here. They want to take a couple of uh, pictures here. So if you can just uh, stay just a little bit, and the rest of you are uh, welcome to Thank you for coming. God bless you.
God bless you too. Have a good trip. Hey, wait, wait.